Hello and welcome to the 8th and final video of the Edinburgh Guide to the PSA. This video will focus on Section 8, Data Interpretation. As a brief overview, this section assesses your ability to interpret the results of clinical investigations in relation to ongoing drug therapy, and then to make an appropriate change to one of the drug prescriptions based on the results. These questions comprise of three sections, a clinical scenario, the question, and five decision options. The clinical scenario is typically shorter and less detailed than the other sections, with a brief case presentation providing drug history and the background to question focus, which is the investigational data. Most of the time the diagnosis is stated in the question, as the purpose of this section is to assess the ability to interpret clinical investigations. There is also the question, which will ask you to select the most appropriate decision regarding one drug which is part of the patient's ongoing therapy based on the investigational data. Finally, there are the decision options, where you are expected to select the most appropriate option. As these questions focus on making a decision regarding one drug, which is part of the patient's ongoing treatment, the answer options are all very similar and variations of the same drug prescription by dose and timing. Usually, there is also the option to make no change to the prescription or to stop the drug entirely. Don't discount these options as sometimes the correct answer can be to make no adjustments and to continue with the same prescription. Within the PSA, this section is worth 12 marks. There are six data interpretation items in the assessment, each of which requires identification of one correct answer from a list of five. Each correct answer is worth two marks, with no marks being awarded for an incorrect answer. Core content typically assessed in this section includes interpreting the most common investigations encountered by a junior doctor. The investigations that are commonly expected to be interpreted and examined in this section are thyroid function tests, INR, urea and electrolytes, antibiotic monitoring, liver function tests, and blood lipids. Now that I've covered a brief overview of the section, I will now move on to walking you through some questions. Question 1. Here we have a 48-year-old man who is coming to his GP for a three-month statin review. Adults started on a statin are all given a three-month review to monitor treatment effectiveness and potential liver dysfunction. He was started on a prescription of high-intensity statin, which in this case was atorvastatin, 30 milligrams, once a day, by mouth, for the treatment of his hypercholesterolemia. He has a background of smoking but does not drink alcohol or use recreational drugs. Investigations provided are the values for ALT from his liver function test and total cholesterol and LDL from his lipid profile test. This also allows comparison of his liver function and lipid profile before commencing high intensity statin therapy to three months after. Now it is current consultation. Of note, his ALT is markedly elevated and around twice as high as the upper limit of normal, 76 units per litre compared to 41 units per litre. His lipid profile has improved since starting treatment and he is now within the target range for both total cholesterol and LDL. The question then asks you the most appropriate course of action to take with regards to his atorvastatin therapy. I now encourage you to pause the video to consider your answer. You may use the BNF to assist you. Now that you've considered your answer, I will walk you through this question. Statin reviews are a common area that is tested in the data interpretation section of the PSA. Adults taking a statin should all have a review three months after their treatment starts to see if the statin is reducing their cholesterol levels and to check it is not affecting their liver. The key takeaway to remember for statins and liver function testing is that there is an acceptable increase in ALT above the baseline in which discontinuing treatment is not indicated. NICE guidelines do not recommend that patients be excluded from statin therapy if transaminases are raised less than three times the upper limit of the reference range, i.e. no higher than 105 units per litre. So in this patient's case, it would be safe to continue his therapy as his ALT is only around two times the upper limit of his reference range, 76 compared to 41. Furthermore, his lipid profile has improved since commencing his treatment, with reductions to his total cholesterol and LDL from above the reference range to within the target values after three months of therapy. 
Therefore, in this scenario, there is no reason to make a change to his current prescription and he should continue with his high intensity statin therapy. I hope that that makes sense and will highlight that you should be familiar with statin reviews and liver function tests as these frequently are tested in the PSA. Now I will move on to question two. This is a 59 year old woman who has blood taken as part of her four month diabetic clinic. She has type two diabetes and stage three chronic kidney disease. She is taking metformin 1000 milligrams once daily, lisinopril 2.5 milligrams once daily and simvastatin 20 milligrams once daily as part of her ongoing drug treatment. The investigations provided are the urea and electrolytes panel and the HbA1c which compares her values from current clinic to her last clinic four months prior. Her urea and creatinine were elevated above baseline at the prior clinic four months ago and appear to have become more deranged and elevated four months later at her current clinic. Her EGFR has also reduced since the last clinic but it was already reduced well below the reference EGFR value. Her HbA1c has remained below the target since her last consultation. Knowing this, what is the most important course of action to take regarding her metformin prescription? Once again, pause to think of your answer. Now, let's walk through the question and compare your answer to ours. The focus of this question is making a clinical decision regarding her metformin prescription when presented with urea and electrolyte derangement. It is important to remember the clinical background for this patient, as she has stage 3 chronic kidney disease, which explains why her serum urea and creatinine were already elevated above the reference range, and why her EGFR is below the reference value. The consideration here is whether or not, since her clinic four months ago, there has been significant enough deterioration of her kidney function to warrant modifying her metformin prescription. Metformin has traditionally been regarded as contraindicated in chronic kidney disease due to the increased risk of lactic acidosis. NICE guidance recommends that in adults with poor kidney function whose EGFR is above 45 to continue metformin therapy. If the EGFR falls below 45 then the dosage should be reviewed. Metformin should be stopped if the EGFR falls below 30. In this case, although there has been a reduction of her EGFR, it is still above 45, so it is safe to continue her metformin therapy. I hope that makes sense and will highlight that you should be familiar with urea and electrolytes and how outcomes of this investigation might impact ongoing drug therapies such as metformin. Now I will move on to the third and final question. Here we have a 73 year old woman who is admitted with fevers, chills and shortness of breath. She is pyrexic, tachycardic, and hypotensive. Her echocardiogram shows vegetations of the mitral valve and blood cultures are positive for Staphylococcus aureus. She is diagnosed with infective endocarditis and prescribed IV antibiotics. Cetrifiaxone, 2 grams once daily, and gentamicin, 5 milligrams per kilogram, 8 hourly. 250 milligrams of gentamicin is given intravenously and after 3 doses, the 1 hour, or peak, concentration is 13 mg per litre, which is outside the target of 5 to 10 mg per litre. The pre-dose, or trough, concentration is 1.7 mg per litre, which is within target of less than 2 mg per litre. Knowing this, what is the most appropriate course of action to take regarding her gentamicin prescription? Now would be a good time to pause the video to come up with your own answer. Hopefully you now have an answer, so let's see how you got on. IV antibiotic monitoring is a very common question in the data interpretation section of the PSA. The main principle to understand is the difference between the one hour or peak concentration and the pre-dose or trough concentration. Their values have different implications for the drug dose and timing. The dose is the major determinant of the one hour concentration. If it exceeds the target range, then the dose must be decreased. If it is below the target range, then the dose must be increased. The timing of the prescription is the major determinant of the pre-dose concentration. If it exceeds the target range, then the timing of the prescription must be increased. In the case of this patient, because her one hour concentration was 13 milligrams per liter, this exceeds the target range of five to 10 milligrams per liter. Therefore, the dosage of gentamicin must be decreased. 
The predose concentration is acceptable and therefore the current 8 hourly timing for her gentamicin is fine and does not need to be increased. The correct answer out of the possible options therefore is to drop the dose to 200 milligrams whilst keeping the same timing of 8 hours. I hope that that makes sense and will highlight that you should be familiar with antibiotic monitoring and terms such as pre-dose and one hour concentrations and their implications with the dosage and timing of the IV antibiotic. I hope you have enjoyed this video as part of the Edinburgh Guide to the PSA series. For further questions on this section and others, please visit our question bank on our website linked below. If you have any queries about anything covered in this video, please contact our team via email or Facebook. If you have a minute to spare, we would love it if you could complete the feedback form linked below in the description. Thanks so much for watching all of our videos. We really hope it helps and best of luck to you in your PSA. Uh-huh.